Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to how World War I changed America. America goes to war. Uh, so far, the only change I know is that I think it's only after World War I that women have started working because all the men went to war and a lot of them died. But let's see what they have to say. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. Let's get into it. Europe had experienced decades of peace, but it was a bit of an illusion. Each of the European empires were building bigger armies, bigger navies. And in the summer of 1914, all of those countries came into conflict after the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. Within the space of about two or three weeks, all of the different empires of Europe lined up on one side or another in a massive war. On the one Why is he calling it empires instead of countries? Because you had the British, like you have England. I'm that's that's an empire. Right? Yeah, that's an empire. But you had the French, you had Germany. Those are countries, not empires, right? On the one side, Germany, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, which were known as the Central Powers, and on the other side, the alliance of Britain, France, and Russia. Germany invades Belgium, August fourth. Two days later, Ellen Wilson dies, this is Woodrow Wilson's wife. So Woodrow Wilson is going through this massive personal crisis, the moment that Europe has exploded in war. It takes him a few weeks to issue an official declaration that America will remain neutral in this conflict. And this is because people think that this will be a quick war, and he understands we have people that come from all the nations that are involved, and he does not want arguments over this European war to tear American society apart the problem is that the war does not i think that was fair of him to say okay this is a problem i don't want to get involved i can see how that's fair for him to say that and quickly and so once the war goes into 1915 the question is what will americans do one of the first because also back in the day i think britain was the great power of the world and so why was anybody wondering what would america do since britain was still the powerhouse of the world things that all of the warring powers needed was money and they turned to this new industrial powerhouse the united states we trade with Europe and we loan money to Europe. Mm -hmm. However, that trade and that money goes primarily to the Allied side. We had floated all these loans to the Allies and we're supplying them with munitions, powder mm -hmm. and foodstuffs and raw materials. Once 1916 arrives, you begin to get a war preparedness movement. In the years between 1914, when the war breaks out and 1917, when the United States declares war, the U.S. is watching, they are involved, and in fact, they're sometimes wrapped up into the war itself because American ships were sometimes sunk by German U-boats, particularly oh. the Lusitania in 1915. So Germany sunk some of America's boats without America being involved in the war. Did they want America to go into the war? Were they so confident in themselves that they wanted America and Britain and Britain and France against them? Arrogance, man. This was a moment when the United States considered entering the war and chose not to. What the United States does is demand from Germany a pledge not to sink American ships. In early 1917, Germany makes a fateful decision. They realize that their only way to win is to keep American ships from reaching Britain and France. They know that by sinking American ships, they will drag the United States into the war. Their gamble is that they can win before the Americans can get there. It turned out to be a okay. losing bet. Germany begins sinking American ships in early 1917. This leads President Woodrow Wilson to go to Congress and ask for a declaration of war. When we enter the war, we have a combined military force of about 300,000. When the war mm. ends, we'll have over 4 million men in arms. So over 19 months, the American military is going to have to grow incredibly. Wait, was that uh, from the selective service? Was it active at the time? Or did people just want to go and fight the Germans because of what they did to American boats? Because going from 300,000 to 4 million in few months, in 19 months, that's insane. The United States adopts conscription, 
mandatory military service okay, that okay, applied okay. to men between the ages of 18 and 45. Okay. Within a very short period of time, the United States turns from having one of the smallest armies in the world to in fact having one of the largest. This is, this is, this is quite insane to me that America had only 300,000 armed men as in the army. Did all those uh, army corps exist back in the day? The Navy, uh, the Marines, Air Force, and all of those uh, different army corps, did they exist at the time or they were only created after World War I or World War II? The modern military doesn't just need numbers, it needs all sorts of people that can do a variety of different jobs. Training these men, having enough officers to lead them, having enough ships to transport them overseas, creating supply lines that can actually keep them fed and armed. This all has to be created almost out of nothing. It will take us until June 1918 to get the bulk of an army there that can make a difference and by the fall campaigns, we have some 850,000 American soldiers on the continent mm. in Europe, which is comparable to the British Army. We actually anticipated yeah. that the war would go on into night. British being as powerful, like Britain being as powerful as they were, they only had 850,000 men in their army. How did they conquer the world? T20 by which time we would have a superbly trained and equipped army and we would win the war. The German army spoiled all of that by deciding they needed to surrender in October 1918. They knew they couldn't hold out any longer because of the pounding of all three allied armies. American entry into the First World War did help turn the tide of the war in the Allies' favor. The victory was a coalition victory, and it was the aid that Americans gave to this coalition and the psychological boost that the American mm -hmm. entry gave to the Allied soldiers that ultimately resulted in the Allied victory. Mm -hmm. Ah, this video is a scam. Like the title said how World War I changed America. I was expecting to see maybe there had been... I mean, the only thing that I see that had changed was that they had the mandatory military service. But other than that, I was expecting maybe some changes in the society, in Congress, in laws, in amendments and things like that. But they didn't talk about any of that. Kind of disappointed, to be honest. But yeah, that was it. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. And until next time.